gentlemen, please welcome the finalist for the gold medal in the compound men. So out they come for the compound men's gold medal match. And this is a high quality affair. Turkey taking on Austria for gold at the second stage of the European Grand Prix. Shooting for the gold medal. Object number one represents Turkey. Batuan Akaglu. Object number two represents Austria. Nico Wiener. Judge of the match is Mr. Berry Struve. And we are ready to go with this gold medal match. So it's time for the Pirates of the Mediterranean to take each other on. Batuan Akshadu from Takia, the world number 29, just 20 years old, taking on the Austrian world number 7, Nico Venner, 26 years old. So Akshadu to get the match underway. So this is an interesting match for, um, well, a couple of reasons. Uh, Akshaoglu is from Turkey, which uh, has always had some really good compound archers or archers in general. Um, they have a really large archery scene in in Turkey, where or Turkey, I'm sorry, um, where um, they have a, a bunch of archers to pick from and uh, a very high competitive uh, national scene. Um, but he's shooting against the reigning uh, defending world champion. So uh, something to uh, to watch out for. Ten. Ten, uh, so will it be a perfect start for Vena from Austria? Bit of movement, long hold as well. Didn't look happy with it and drifts down into the nine. So all square at 29 apiece. We said it was going to be high quality. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, Devena, world champion, uh, reigning world champion. Uh, range, field and 3D world champion, in fact, uh, Vena over his career. But this season, what, 33rd at the Highland Archery World Cup in Antalya, matched in Shanghai, the same result. Uh, Batuan Akcholu from Turkia, he took a bronze in the Conquest Cup earlier on this year, but he's got 17th in Antalya, 9th in Shanghai. So you have to say form really is with uh, the athlete from Turkia. Yeah, um, he has been a bit more consistent this season. And uh, um, yeah, you, you, on the other hand, you cannot really uh, just ignore the fact that he's shooting against the, the reigning world champion. So uh, in that regard, uh, this is going to be an interesting match. It's already 29 in the world ranking. Just took 10 position from last year. And was uh, European champion in 2022 in Munich uh, with a team in the compound man, of course. Previous gold medal was uh, in 2019. Samsung. So, just uh, looking at techniques, uh, I'm gonna start the end this way for once. Uh, Akshaoglu has a, a pretty, um, like, tense way of, uh, of standing uh, with his uh, spine kind of crooked uh, his left shoulder is quite high um, there there's a lot of like um, I know the Dutch word but that doesn't help anyone uh, but it's like it's a very um, cramped up way of standing almost um, whereas Nico is more open he has his shoulder pretty low uh, his arm is slightly bent to, uh, I think accommodate for his uh, extremely long draw length, but also that's just the way he prefers to hold his bow. Um, so it's two kind of polar opposites of uh, of how they're shooting. Where uh, the archer from Turkey is a bit more, you know, tense. There's a bit more muscle tension, um, 
and uh, Nico is kind of more relaxed and just waiting for the shot to happen. I've got to know what that Dutch word is. Uh, gedrongen. Gedrongen. Yeah, that's actually quite good. <laughs> you sound surprised. <laughs> yeah, not many people uh, just repeat the Dutch word like that. Or oh, now has that clipped the line? I think it might well have done for a 58. Yeah. I think so as well. So perfect from Venner and a single point lead, uh, subject to obviously to confirmation, uh, but. Uh, it is, it is interesting, the contrast in styles, but as you always tell me, Chef, uh, it's all about what works for you, right? Yeah, yeah, especially in uh, compound archery, because there is a bit more you can you can get away with, uh, I would almost say, um, because you have the let off to work with. Um, you typically have like 25 to 30 percent left um, of your draw weight when you're uh, in full draw. So as long as you get to that full draw position, you can then pick a position that's most stable and, and gets the best aiming pattern for you because that's what's really important with compound archery. Um, you do have to take in mind or keep in mind that you need to uh, have a way to make your release go off without having it uh, be on command for most people. Um, so you need to have some room for extension in that in that regard. But it's not like regrowth archery where you're holding the complete bow weight uh, and you will also have to extend through the clicker um, where like there's only a couple ways you can really do that uh, in the proper way without uh, you know destroying your whole technique. Another point of note uh, in this uh, match, just notice the, the wind flags, the wind socks uh, have just slightly changed direction. Yes, the wind is blowing slightly left to right, but it now seems to be coming from behind the archers. Excellent. Yeah, you can see here that uh, Chao Glu, when he kind of pulls through his release hey, you can see his chest is kind of rising a little bit Nine. which is uh, it's not uncommon but it's not necessarily the uh, most textbook way to do things um, whereas Nico you can see that it goes all from the shoulder and from the back uh, so he's just pulling and then his Nine. release goes off this is not the best example obviously but that's just uh, what you get for talking about it as a commentator <laughs> <laughs> Standard being set here is incredibly high. Nine, twenty-eight, means eighty-seven, eighty-seven, a tie score after three hands. Well, there you have it. The uh, scores all level here. Uh, this, uh, competition, uh, well, one, uh, they're seriously under pressure here. 87 apiece in this uh, second Nico stage of the European Grand Prix the, in Umeg, Croatia. Two very high quality archers going up against each other. Batuan Akchualu from Turkey and then Nico Venner from Austria with absolutely nothing between them. So, Chef, the question you always love me asking you. Who do you fancy for this one? Um, I think uh, I've seen Nico in some clutch situations before where it was a really tight match, but then he just managed to pull through. Um, and he seems to be relatively relaxed now, so um, I think I'm going to give it to him. There you go. Prediction made. Actually... 
shooting first in the fourth of five end. Has the pleasure of potentially putting some pressure on his Austrian opponent. Nico always, like, he really has a peculiar way to get into his anchor position. But once he gets there, uh, it seems really solid. He, uh, he seems really comfortable. Um, whereas Batahan, he kind of just goes, uh, like, he pulls back his bow and he kind of, like, just puts his hand against his uh, cheek as his anchor point. So, again, a, a subtle difference in technique here. But you can see... Nico kind of pulls back and then it's almost like he locks his hand behind his jaw um, and it's a bit of a different uh, approach. Yeah, I noticed that uh, Akiyoji as, as well, he, he is looking at the target right from the start of his process, whereas when we see Venna draw, he's looking down at his bow. There was a bit of pressure on that one. Yeah, there was a bit of pressure, wasn't there? It kind of showed through, didn't it? Yeah, it, it seems so. Uh, it's difficult to say from where we're sitting if it's uh, due to some wind or if it's due to, you know, the nerves that he uh, has. But um, I feel like that shot, he couldn't get his sight to settle in the middle. Uh, and we saw that before in the second end where he shot the left low nine, um, where it just seemed like he was battling his sight the whole the whole way through the shot and he just couldn't get it to the middle um and by the time the shot went off he already knew what time it was sort of so one point difference going into the fifth and it's uh at charlie from takia with that advantage we do of course wait for confirmation but we're seeing the scores being changed now we think it's 117 on target one and a 116 on target number two yeah i'm sure that nico has had a a uh, little bit of a conversation uh, between the two ends now uh with his uh, his father actually wolfgang uh, who is in the coach's box for him um, and he is in the situation that we've talked about many times before where you're trailing by one point leaving or going into the last end um, which is not a terrible place to be in because if you can manage to put down a really good score um, that will mean that you put some pressure on your opponent and uh, you can kind of force your opponent into some uh, some really high pressure situations it's not that unusual is it in archery to see a bit of a family affair a couple of venas in the uh on the shooting line, target number two. No, it's not not that unusual. It's uh, typically it's also um, like it's something you can do at all ages. So you can uh, uh, start at a very young age, and you can uh, do it until a very you know old age. Uh, so it might be something for you to pick up at some point. But uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, yeah. It's, it's a sport that can last resist, for generations. You? <laughs> <laughs> Young at heart, mate. Young at heart. Last land uh, for the gold medal. So going into the fifth, uh, Venna training by a single point. Not the greatest shot, but manages to keep it just inside the tendering. And if he keeps doing that, he might get uh, Akshaw Glue to slip up a little bit. No sign of that yet. 
So pressure switches over to target number two. There was a little bit of a hiccup there, but he uh, steered it in the right direction and still uh, shot a 10. But I think if Nico shoots a 10 here, then he still has a chance. Does it. A perfect for a 146. Game on now for Akshaliu. 10 for the win. Oh, finishes off in style. Boom, says the athlete from Turkey. A 147 is a very, very high quality score, and he needed it to take the gold. Batuan Akcholu from Turkey taking the compound men's gold at the second stage of the European Grand Prix.